What's up and welcome back. I'm Steph Sabra, joined by Andrew the Flash Gordon. What's up? And today we are learning a little bit more about India thanks to a video from Slide Bean. Thank you so much for letting us watch this video. It is called The Side of India the West Doesn't Know About, Startup Planet Episode 2. We watched another video learning more about India in a different scope than what Western news outlets might give us. I'm curious to see what this video is going to be about and the view that we're going to get here before we get into it make sure you hit that subscribe button bell icon all notifications and vote this up let's learn some things so you just walk out and you come across this this building that we genuinely thought was abandoned it belongs to my property there will be enough funds for you we're about to embark in a 33-hour flight across the world to India. Is that how long the flight takes? You guys to the maybe Before I came to India, southern there was one word in my head to describe this country. Chaotic. Huh. You can only really experience a city if you're on a scooter, not in a car. There's this picture that our side of the world has about India, and you can blame Hollywood. And you can blame just statistics without a lot of context. But the truth is that our image of India is incomplete. And I've struggled with this for years. I know firsthand how many tech companies are coming out of India. Many of them are good friends of mine. I know how much people in tech make and how much that contrasts with the rest of the country. Have been offers as high as two crore rupees per annum for IIT graduates. I know how many of you watching are from India. But why? Why do so many companies come out of India? What advantages do they have for being here? What kind of life do entrepreneurs and startup employees live when they're making 10 times what the rest of the country is making? From the other side of the world, we just don't understand it. I don't understand. So I needed to experience India myself. I spent two weeks talking to founders, experiencing Indian food and culture, and discovering a new side of India. A side of India that us Westerners hardly ever talk about, and that I had no idea was so big. More importantly, I discovered how statistics just fail miserably at painting a full picture of what India is like. I discovered how this chaos that we perceive is really a pool of innovation for tech companies and how technology is transforming this country neighborhood by neighborhood and city by city. I already like like the journalistic approach to this video. I love stats. I think that they do say a lot, but I completely agree with him that they don't paint a full picture and they can only give us a piece of a puzzle. I'm curious to see what he finds. Definitely. And I also find it fascinating because he's right, like just from the medium of Hollywood and and such, just any inf where you process your information from the States, like there's a lot of people who have stereotypes about India. And I've just learned so much in my journey on this channel, just like, oh my God, there's just so much I haven't even learned, but to, I just find this so fascinating to actually go there yeah. and to like take this journey. Like there's such an interesting see you know, his thing. perspective. Yeah, no, I think that's so cool to do. I, I love that idea. I liked how he said like the one word he thought about of India was chaotic. I think that's how a lot of Western media portrays India. Telling because I think that it's a reminder that even within the states, we have states who say that these other states don't understand how their state is. Like, we have a lot of problems between the Midwest, the West side, and the East side. East coast, West coast, and Midwest. And, like, the Midwest is like, none of the coasts get us. And then the coasts are like, none of you get us. And so it's like, draw that from across the world, and we certainly don't have a full understanding. Definitely. <laughs> Back in 2017, I hired our first employee out of India, this talented UX designer, and he told us his salary expectation was $4,000. And I looked into every single statistic about Indian median income, 
and I could not wrap my head around. Major concern: We have around 95 million entered extreme uh, poverty just in 2020. The average adult mm. in India makes around $2,600 per year. That's $220 a month. Wow. That means a salary of $4,000 or $48,000 a year puts you well into oh the 10% goodness. of income. Whoa! In the but there is so much more to this. For starters, that $220 a month income would allow most people to live a comfortable life. Wow. My yearly salary when I started my career in Wipro per month, I was getting paid two fifty three hundred dollars Back then, I was able to survive with that. I got my own car. I used to drive like 40 kilometers up and down every day. Like a Nusara Deja Vu, this thing. This is oil, like cooking. If you compare the prices of groceries here in India, they're about 70% cheaper for the same product of the same. Wow. That bracket of 10% earners in India, that's 130 million people. That's more than the entire population of these countries. Holy moly. India is big, vast. It'll soon outgrow China as the most populated country in wow. the world. And there is that reality that Hollywood loves to exploit. Yeah. Is that real hair? That's only part of India. What I experienced was high income cities like Bengaluru or Chennai, where tech and startup jobs are giving people transformative income. Uh, there's a whole lot of action on the markets. I've seen the city grow, literally grow, grow out, right? From a time when we had just one place, which is the city center to go hang out. Now, there are so many micro markets. India has not That's had the kind cool. of exits that US has, but there have been some exits, very high profile exits, which have minted millionaires overnight. In 2021, India saw thousands of new tech startup companies founded wow. and 46 new unicorns. A good chunk of those are based out of Bengaluru, Chennai, and Delhi. And you can see that concentration of companies. You can see coffee shops and the co-working spaces. Do you know where we're going? Chinago. Uh, The hotel. Okay, so you can only withdraw 10,000 rupees. That's the, that's the max. Oh, come on. Can't get money from neither of my accounts, which means we have, uh, no, we have some dollars, but not rupees that we need to exchange because we're, I feel, I feel uneasy if I don't even if I don't have like any local currency. Mm. That's interesting. I wonder if the card system is different there because when I've travel done traveling in Europe, almost all use Apple Pay now mm. or um, digital pay. So people barely bring out their cards. In the States, it's moving to that as well. We're a little behind Europe in that sense. You still want to be able to take money for people who don't have access to Apple Pay. Yeah. But I wonder what if it's more of like a comfort thing because it is important to have local set of finances there. Yeah, yeah. I was just recently at the airport a couple months ago in Denver, and I saw there at the airport they had multiple different facets of monetary uh, for different countries in case you were traveling internationally, so I thought that was interesting. The furthest I've ever gotten out of the country was New York or Boston. I've actually never gotten out of the country. I know, weird, right? Because that was the first time when I was in Denver a couple months ago, and I saw that at the airport where I saw that there were, oh, you could get different forms of currency for other countries if you are traveling, which is smart. What happened? happens if you don't get that and you do go to another country like does your card work from the state like how does how does that all work it so should work obviously not every country most countries do i think there's better times to pull out money so like i know that like people traveling to europe let's say the pound is at a really inexpensive price in comparison to the dollar so if you pull out like a hundred US dollars and pounds you make more you get more pounds than you would on a different day mm. so there's like a game to that in that yeah. sense but yeah I found two large trends with Indian startups on one hand tech for India those are like your payment gateways and your delivery apps they're solving local problems and adapting technology that already exists in the west for a local market that companies like Uber just couldn't figure out themselves so I just woke up from my jet lag nap and I am really hungry right now, so I just need to order some food. I'm Jose or Kaya? Yes. Kids. And on the other hand, SaaS and enterprise tech. As a founder, you are probably their customer without even knowing that they're based out of India. They understand how to sell to US customers. They understand mm -hmm. how to compete 
in that world stage. More importantly, though, the rise of tech startups means that more and more people understand how tech can transform their lives. The city is home to hundreds of colleges and universities. It graduates thousands of software engineers every year. They are joining the workforce with a good chance of making an income their families and the rest of India would never have access to. As a kid, for you as a kid, did you understand how tech could make your life so different? I'm almost 40 years old. I was growing up, like tech wasn't you know, didn't exist as a tech. Mm, Today, yeah. even among the people that we've hired, we've had so many people who've joined us while they were still in college. Mm. But then again, that contrast is significant. Like if I speak to some of my younger cousins or nieces who are in like, you know, tier two, tier three cities, they don't know. I should probably explain what this tier system yeah. means. India uses a tier system to classify their cities. Essentially, they have cities going from tier one to tier six, and they're generally classified by population. That's the official classification. So a city, a tier one city will have 100,000 inhabitants or more. A tier two city will have 50 to 100,000 inhabitants and so on. A tier four, I guess, would be like a very small town. And so you have people coming from these places they don't come from means, right? They don't have a, a good family name. They don't have connections. They didn't go to a good school. I think that what you have to understand about these tiers, it's this contrast that we have from the India that we've been painted to, which is probably cities that are not tier one. This is a reality of India that we did not get to explore and I don't pretend to understand. It's what surprises about India is just how different tier one cities are from what we expect that it would be and just this incredible access to opportunity and how people are slowly beginning to understand how a job in tech can transform their lives. What do you want to be when you grow up? Doctor. Police. Police. IS officer. You want to become a good architect and serve the society. I think the gap between somebody going to a good university here and what they might make versus going to like a tier three or or college and what you would make is huge. That's interesting because I feel like the idea of better the college you go to, the better the job in the States has completely shifted in the past few years. We're seeing a complete difference in the way we view college and the importance of college, at least on the coasts, I feel that, or yeah. the major cities. I know a lot of people earning a lot of money who didn't go to college. Oh, yeah. And th obviously different um, jobs call for different education. For law, that's one of the few jobs that is the higher the law school you go to, the higher the law office you can work at, which yes. means the higher the income you can be gaining if you don't want to go government. That's if you want to do private law, which is getting into the nitty gritty that you don't need to know about. But for a lot of jobs, like in the entertainment industry, even med school, like med school is very very hard to get into there's a saying amongst med students here that once you're into med school that's like kind of the few okay you're gonna <laughs> if you pass your exams you're gonna be a doctor and if you do really good in med school you're fine it doesn't matter if you go to the number one it helps a little bit but it's not the the game changer yeah no i've followed a lot of friends in the past who they've gone to med school whether that be for health or for dentistry or whatever mm -hmm. and then once they finish with med school then they open their own practices mm -hmm. and now they're they're thriving they're so successful i mean because everyone needs a doctor everyone needs a dentist like these are things right. you need uh, on a daily basis in regards to the tears like i i had no idea. Obviously, I knew there were different types of towns in terms of like what's nicer and what's not nice. But like learning about the tiers is very fascinating. Like right. I, I had no idea in regards to that. I'm just loving like the education that I'm getting just from this. So just like in what they get in from a college level in certain tiers versus like the lifestyle they live in these. Because again, the Hollywood themes that we've seen in films and just in general is like from more like the tier four and stuff like that. So just getting to see like the different styles in you know, the cities of tier one and tier two versus the other tiers, it, it's very fascinating mm -hmm. to me. Cost of education at all levels has increased dramatically. The criticism has been that private universities charge very high fees and there's no cap on that. When That's I did my same MBA here. 13 years back in India, in India uh, you know, the cost of that degree to what it is today is almost 6x. Mm -hmm. There is so much more pressure on you as a kid to get to a good school and get to a good college and get to a you know, become a computer engineer and get to a tech job. We know that India has this very ambitious plan to become a global electronic hub. In Chennai, the bubbles that these high-income jobs create are visible and they are tangible. You pass them by as you drive and you see the contrast 
brutal side by side. So this is the IT Express, but like this is where a lot of the companies here in Chennai have their offices and universities, like tech schools. By all means, they look like a super developed, fancy, cool tech building area. If you turn around on the other side, there's this building, which looks completely abandoned. We thought it was abandoned as we drove by, but no, like it, it operates. I don't know, it's a train stop or something. And you know, we were there maybe 15 minutes and then this lady came this lady came in really, really, really angry, demanding us to go with her, which which got us a little scared. Yeah, it turns out that you you can't shoot video inside a train station, okay? Huh? Mm -hmm. But Bengaluru, on the other hand, it feels like the entire city is that bubble. We've been doing research about Bangalore, trying to understand what goes on in the city. I have not seen a single reference about Bangalore that presents it as a city that would have a place like this. And this is, if this is across the street from our hotel, which is not a fancy hotel, that means that there are places like this all over the city. Maybe the street noise is a clue, but either way, this is not the picture of India that I had. Inequality. In Unequal country. Unequal society. Unequal. Unequal country. Inequality is once again a common theme when discussing India. And it's real. India is one of the most unequal countries in the world. But once here, it's what I thought I was going to experience. And that takes me back to that $4,000 salary. That is transformative money, but it transforms lives differently. Indians love to save. The one thing that a lot of Indians aspire to is to buy a home. In general, the savings rates in India are pretty high, mm. right? Like, so people always have a very high, like, I want to save and I want to buy a house. Meanwhile, the country still holds on to its roots in spite of all this change. For example, eating out is a relatively new phenomenon in India, right? Like, people would not eat out so much. If you speak to a lot of people, um, you know, from my parents' generation, they look at eating out as like, oh, you, you didn't have the means to cook at home. Right, like it's mm. not uh, that something they would look forward to. They would do it if they needed to, like if they were traveling. Mm. And even if they were traveling, a lot of people would actually carry their supplies and cook there. Because in the end, these salaries mean opportunity. Like in India, it's very, it's very easy to get domestic help. Right, you want a nanny for your kid, you want a driver to drive your car, you want somebody to come help uh, to cook for you. Everybody here probably has like at least one or two people you know, doing cleaning and cooking for them. Mm. That person is probably making around 500. All of this is happening in one of the world's youngest countries, a country on its way to being the most populated in the world. Imagine the potential that India has. Thousands of young professionals earn big salaries in the careers that are shaping the present and future with more on the way. When we covered Silicon Valley, we talked about that network effect. We talked about access to capital. We talked about talent and the concentration of startups in the same place. And all of that is here. And add to that the fact that Indian entrepreneurs understand selling to developed countries the same way they understand selling to developing countries. Have you heard of this term, uh, Jugaad? Just, you know, creating something out of nothing. That's one of my favorite parts of this ecosystem personally, I, and I love that word, and I hope you remember it. Cities like mm -hmm. Bengaluru are a bridge. They're a crossroads of two worlds that can disrupt each other. So there is no doubt that a new Silicon Valley is not far from the horizon. Mm. But there's something else here. India is a country with a fascinating history that has learned to evolve with the times. We actually explore this in depth in our next video of Startup Planet, where we look at the entire history of Bengaluru and how it became the tech hub that it is today. But for today, for today's point, this engineer's salary is transformative. A transformative salary that ensures a future. Now, I'm not talking about a future from themselves. This is a future for the entire country. Mm, I thought that was a really great video. Yeah, no, it was an interesting perspective, like actually seeing what you hear, what you watch, like to actually getting on the ground, talking to people, talking to CEOs of these startup companies, of these tech companies, and like what it took to build. And just obviously we got to learn the word jacquard, which means, of course, 
learning to make something out of nothing, which I found very fascinating. I love stuff like that. Again, just not only that he got on the ground and was talking to people, but he got to experience what life in India is like. I definitely want to travel there one day and just this video like encompasses me wanting to go there because I, I found this whole thing just so interesting. I really had no idea that some people were only making a couple hundred bucks a month and they could eat and they could live comfortably off that because here, if you make a couple hundred dollars a month, you're not surviving. Yeah, that might be good for a couple days. If, if even that. Yeah, that's like the like huge takeaway here is our cost of living uh, is almost impossible. Not in every city, but if you're in big cities with a lot of people, a lot of business happening, it's so expensive. So, so expensive. Like people making minimum wage can barely afford to live uh, in the major cities. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people are leaving Los Angeles because it's so expensive. So I thought this was a great view like obviously this is one person's experience traveling but i think he did a really great job of meeting with people who were born there lived there or maybe moved there started a startup there talking to the different startups and looking at the startups and the income from a greater scope he's saying like this life-changing money not just for them but for the entire country which is what i really praise and impresses me about the east in comparison to the west there's a way more collective energy about we all do good we all do better the Absolutely. west is kind of like every man for himself yeah <laughs> no for sure i mean i agree with you I, I i wish every country adopted the method of hey everyone should do amazing and well you know it's not just one person does great and that's it like the richer get richer and the poorer get poor. No, everyone should be fantastic, rich, and successful. I mean, that would be the dream. That would yeah. be the goal. Thank you, Slide Bean. This was a really great video. Very I thought good. it was really well produced. I loved like the day in the life type shots and kind of seeing what it was like to travel there. It definitely inspired us both to get to India ASAP. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up. I'm Steph Sabra. This is Andrew Flash Gordon. Much love.